What's up guys, this is Keenan Cornelius here, and today I'm going to bring you a commentary on my role with Marcelo. So as you can see, we snagged some security footage to fill in the missing spaces of the original match. There are a couple uh, parts that were left out due to camera malfunction, but luckily Rob, the owner of Studio 540, got us the security footage and they uh, spliced it all together so we can see everything that happened. So uh, I'm going to try and highlight some of the things we both did well, some of the things maybe we both did bad. Um, to, so you guys can actually learn something. So uh, I always like to pull guard. Um, that's actually not true. I, sometimes I like takedowns. So but lately I've been on a guard kick ever since ADCC because that's basically a wrestling tournament. I was just like, man, I'm going to focus a lot more on my guard. So Marcelo puts the hip pressure uh, fast and uh, you got to watch out for that. Like you got to make sure you keep your distance. You can't let someone just pin your knees like that unless you're like a legit half guard player. But even still, like I want to keep some distance if um, if someone's putting their pressure down on me like that. So that's what I was trying to do there, keep his weight off of me. He drops again, and I just sort of frame on his neck, and then it didn't work, and he actually makes me turtle here. Um, the reason I turtle is like a, it's a bail maneuver, you know. If you feel like you're gonna get your guard pass, sometimes you got to turtle to like take your chance at escaping the back attack rather than letting your guard get past. And he goes for the uh, Marcelatine here, he starts to try and set up a guillotine, but I was defending it, and he switches to the back and immediately tries to throw the hooks in. Now what happened there is actually really important, so we're going to actually back up a little because this is kind of a unique thing that uh, I don't see a lot of people do. I actually learned this sort of movement from watching Roberto Satoshi a lot, and so check this out. I'm gonna, We're going to take this through clip by clip. So he switches to the back here, and now when I feel him get the seatbelt and the hook, I immediately roll to the other, the other side. See how I rolled to the other side here? Now I know he gets the seatbelt on the uh, controlling my left arm and my neck. So that watch what happens here. He gets the seatbelt controlling my left arm and neck here. Okay. Now this is really important because if he manages to keep me on this side of his body while controlling around my arm and neck here, like this, this is going to be a problem for me because that's the best side of control. Because then from here he's going to be able to throw his left leg up and over and start to get this hook in. Right? So what I want to do is actually go to the opposite side. I want to try and roll my body through to the opposite side. And you'll see that's what I do here. I roll and I go to this side. Now the reason that's important is because now I'm able to block this top hook and then the weight of my body is defending the bottom hook. So his top hook can't really come in here because my leg is in the way and my arm is in the way. So my arm's blocking, you can see I'm reaching out, anticipating a hook here, right? And then my hips are gonna drop to the mat and that's gonna make it harder for him to throw in the bottom hook. Now, by switch, by rolling to the other side, I've made his uh, seatbelt grip here a lot weaker, like a, probably a thousand times weaker, okay? <laughs> Compared to being on the other side, which is bad, bad news. If you roll to the opposite side when someone gets the seatbelt, uh, you're gonna have a much better chance of escaping. And I'll show you why right now check this out so as we roll through you'll see it's gonna be way more difficult for him to hang on to me because his weight is all off to the left side like he has to be able to pull his whole body up while gripping with this grip here he's gonna to have to bring his weight his body all the way to the other side to be able to throw any hooks in right so what you do from there is then you go to your knees and now he's not gonna let go of the seatbelt because he knows that's his best chance of taking the back, right? For any good guy who's attacking the back, they want to keep the seatbelt because the seatbelt's obviously a dominant grip. But what can happen is when they commit heavily to that seatbelt and you get to your knees, they're so far out of position and their weight is so far up that it's going to be difficult for them to actually uh, maintain their weight on the back. Like You don't want to have your weight riding high. You want to be able to have your hips like low over my hips here instead of being up high like this and he's sort of hanging off the top. So what, watch what happens here. I sort of stand up and I'm able to keep blocking this knee so he can't throw the hook in. And then I stand up and see how his weight is so high there. When your weight's that high, like you have no choice but to let go. And uh, I actually use this kind of a lot in Nogi because uh, like there's, I train with a lot of guys who are super sick at guard passing. And um, here we can actually keep the video playing. I'm not just talking to a blank screen. People are super sick at guard passing, and like you have to turtle a lot. So having good turtle defense is really important. So here's actually where one part of the video gets cut off. Um, he puts me in single leg X immediately, immediately here, and Marcel has a sick single leg X guard. Um, he's so good at getting to that. Like normally, I wouldn't want to be in this position. I would try and escape this position as much as I can, uh, and not like get caught because this is an offensive position for me, and I have to be purely on the defensive here. So you see, I'm trying to control the wrist there. Um, he's getting my hand off his head and using a lot of wrist control. Uh, he uses that a lot. He immediately goes to the, the X guard here, 
and now we got to switch to the camera we're over here in this corner so you'll see I actually high step and try and back step there to get out of the X guard so I managed to escape the X guard luckily and uh, to try and start to work some passing he uses a lot of wrist control uh, I noticed Rob was saying that you can see he's using that wrist control there so I can't actually put my hands on him um, make it makes it really difficult to pass sitting guard because you need to be able to grab the guy's head or do something like that so we switch back to the high quality camera he grabs both my legs and I go for the Kimura. Now this is like an A game move for me. Like I always go for the Kimura here, but he actually shut it down really well. He puts his knee on the inside of my elbow. See that? That's a that's a crazy detail that I hadn't actually seen anyone do before or have anyone try it to me. But uh, let's move this out of the way. Check this out. So let's move it a little forward. So I have the Kimura grip, and usually from here I can roll through or do some sort of roll through movement. But you actually see his left knee goes onto my elbow. That's pretty crazy because what that does is it's opening my elbow. So you see right there is where it's happening. He's putting his knee on my elbow and he's pushing my elbow down towards the mat, which is in turn freeing his arm, which is in here. So here we go. Let's move forward a little bit more. So he pushes down my elbow and is able to pull his arm out, which is like I'm really good at that position. I can usually hang on to the Kimura all day, but he actually gets out. And uh, now I'm stuck in the turtle again. So what I thought was going to be an offensive position put me in a bad position again. Starts putting me in the um, uh, what's this position called? The crucifix. So he starts crucifixing me. I'm, I'm crucified here. What can I do? You know, his Marcelo is sick of this position. So I'm just trying to focus on defending here. Like he really had me on the defensive for most of this match, and uh, it's not a match. This training session. And uh, he's control. I, I think he's trying to get my wrist control here. He wants to get that wrist control with his left hand, but that's why I was trying to keep my arm away as much as I could. And so here I actually do the same escape. Uh, I try and bring him over to the opposite side with the seatbelt. See, same exact thing. And this time I was actually able to attack my own seatbelt as that happened. And the seatbelt's like kind of a var variant on the seatbelt. Like you can see here, I, I have like a seatbelt slash Kimura control, like high up on his bicep here, which I find to be a good control. And uh, got some people almost kicked us in the head and I was just trying to maintain the grip here he's escaping uh, like really well I, I I feel really confident in my back takes I was having a really hard time see how he's turning into me here this was really good defense he's blocking my bottom leg too with his with his hand here stopping me from being able to get the hooks in um, but luckily this Kimura seatbelt grip like kind of eliminates that uh, that uh, escape option and I start throwing my hooks in He's blocking the hooks there with his hand, and I, once I got one hook in, I was pretty sure I was going to be able to get the other hook in, but uh, I couldn't actually set up any position here. Like he, I, I couldn't get any sort of like rear naked choke set up. He was defending so well. Uh, I switched to the body lock just to hang on because I did not want him to escape. Like once, <laughs> once I got the back, I was like, okay, I'm going to hang on. Is like for dear life now. I don't want him to get out. And uh, for the rest of the match, it's pretty much just me trying to hang on to his back, and he's working to get his back to the mat. And I'm just working to keep my uh, body lock and try and underhook his far armpit is what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get the, like when he brings his back to the mat, I think you'll see it. I'm really trying to bring my free arm and uh, hook it under his armpit to pull his weight back over the top of me. And possibly set up like arm bar attempts here. Um, so I go for the Kimura grip on the opposite side. I just like to use, was, there's Majid. Look at that hair. Best hair in Jiu Jitsu, man. I'm telling you. So uh, I'm using the Kimura grip again with the opposite side body lock. It's really strong control. And oh, I guess this part got cut out too. Oh no, we're back. Uh, so he's trying, trying to bring his, here I, I hook to the far armpit to try and bring his weight back up onto you. If some guy's bringing his back to the mat, that's a good option to try and uh, recover by hooking the armpit and bringing their weight over the top of you again. Um, he's trying to bring the arm over, which is like awesome defense there you want to always try and bring your arm over but you can counter that with the Kimura grip as you can see there I Kimura gripped as you tried to bring the arm over and then try and set up an arm bar um, like uh, I try and underhook the leg trying to get something there wasn't a lot of time left like I actually went for the arm bar because I knew there wasn't a lot of time left so I didn't uh, it's like if he escaped like he didn't wouldn't have a lot of time to crucifix me again so yeah that was my match with Marcelo it was awesome opportunity uh, it was like I really thanks to Marcelo for letting me roll with him and I hope to go out to New York get some more training with with him and his team soon I also rolled with Mateus who like, well, he's a beast uh, so thank you guys thanks to the guys at Studio 540 Rob Zepp thank you very much uh, Marcelo check out Marcelo at mginaction.com and if you like commentaries like these I do uh, post commentaries on my website uh, keenanonline.com where I teach a lot of techniques so you can check me out there uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the mats